Hi guys, welcome back to Wild Vlogs, where we talk about all things wildlife and all things filmmaking. Now I tried to look for a dictionary definition of B-roll, but I couldn't find one. On Wikipedia, it suggests that it's a supplementary and alternative footage intercut with the main footage, which is kind of light on a descriptive element of what B-roll actually is. And I think that's because over the decades, B-roll has become many things to many people. In a lot of aspects now, B-roll has gone way beyond just something filler, if you like, between the main shots. It's a very artistic element. In fact, some films now, I've noticed, are 100% B-roll. But I've always felt as a wildlife filmmaker, and for my particular genre, that B-roll has become, or is, an uneasy bedfellow. Sure, you'll see in the mainstay documentaries that you'll see featured or produced by the BBC, there is B-roll there, say the dripping leaf just post a storm, or maybe the wonderful ambient scenes, the vistas, or even the uh, padding cheetah paws with a foreground of grass. But the modern styles of B-rolls, those you'll see done by the masterful purveyors like the king of B-roll, Peter McKinnon, or the new up-and-coming star of B-roll, Daniel Schiffer, just don't seem to feature in wildlife documentaries. They have a way of doing amazing shots with incredibly, almost infinitely technical, it seems, transitions, based tightly to a soundtrack and, crucially, against a wonderful soundscape. Now, as long as if I don't like that kind of B-roll, I absolutely adore it. I'm a huge follower of these guys. And I would do anything, in fact, I intend to, to learn the techniques to a high standard and somehow try and infiltrate them into the types of filmmaking I do. But I want to do it so it sits comfortably with the mainstay of the footage. That said, I do love my, my moments with B-roll. I do need my fix of B-roll every now and again. And this last Sunday, I was invited out by a fellow YouTube creator and a dear friend of mine, Graham Barker, to Frampton Marsh, an incredible nature reserve in Lincolnshire. Now, I knew that the wildlife aspect of filming there was going to be so competently handled by Graham itself. He does these wonderful uploads called Nature Notebooks most every week. So I knew that the wildlife aspect was going to be absolutely and competently dealt by Graham, which left me then with 100% of my time to concentrate on a B-roll production. And my thinking was I wanted to do a kind of crossover of a bio of Graham and the Nature Notebook with a behind-the-scenes look of him out on a shoot. That's coming up now, and I hope you enjoy it. My earliest memories of being into nature when I was little was watching TV programmes like Zoo Quest and Look. My dad was a real countryman and he had brilliant field craft. I remember him showing me a woodcock sitting tight on eggs. I couldn't see it at first because it was so well camouflaged but he pointed it out to me and it was magical. I don't know where the interest in cameras came from, but I've always been a huge camera geek. And when eventually I did camera work and editing professionally, the pro cameras I used didn't have long enough lenses for filming wildlife. It wasn't until the small SD cameras came out, with 30 and 40 times lenses, that I felt I could do wildlife filmmaking as a hobby. The earliest films I made I put onto DVD and gave them out to friends. And then I started my YouTube channel. Lenses got longer and the cameras got better to really what is broadcast quality.
I get so much pleasure from filming for the notebooks. You're out with nature. You feel a connection with the earth. It ticks so many boxes for me, from just watching nature, to filming it and putting together, hopefully, a film that is enjoyable and informative. I get tremendous inspiration and encouragement from some of the lovely comments that people leave from knowing that people are enjoying the films. I'm really passionate about making the films and I'll certainly carry on as long as I can. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And of course, what you must do now immediately, well, at the end of this vlog, is head over to Graham Parker's page, link down below, and catch his latest upload, which is that of Frampton Marsh, where you'll get to see all the wildlife we observed on that wonderful but windy morning out in Lincolnshire. Please do also subscribe to Graham's channel if you haven't already. That's the end of vlog 14. There will be plenty more vlogs coming up where B-roll is a feature, especially the transitional aspects of it. I have a real pension for funky transitions. But for now, it just leaves me to say, take care and goodbye.